Hey everybody, this is Anthony. Today we're going to learn how to automatically read our email using Google Apps Scripts and pull that information and put it into a Google Sheet. Now if you have something like apartments.com, say you get leads that send in the same thing every time where it's say email, phone number, name, and you want to put that into a sheet or some consolidated source, you can do that easily. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start in our inbox and we're going to create a label see this one called apartment inbox we're going to create this label so that all new incoming emails will automatically assign to that so the way to do that is you select the email that you're interested in you click these three dots and then you do filter messages like these anything that comes from lead at apartments.com we want to create a filter for that and we want to apply the label and then we will select our label for me I'm doing apartment inbox you can call yours whatever you want you can create a new one here by giving it a name and then just select create filter once you do that all new emails will come in and be assigned to that particular label and then you can also view them off to the side here as well so you can see I've got a lot of labels here and that's going to help us later when we're reading these emails from our app script the next thing we want to do is we want to go to Google Sheets so we'll go to Google, click the, the top right, and go to Sheets, and we're going to create a new document. So in order to create a new document, we'll just do blank. And so let's put some basic info in here. First, let's give it a name. Let's call this one Lead Tutorial 1, I guess. And let's give some column headers. Let's see. We have, let's open the email. What do we want? We want, okay, we got name, phone, email. Uh, let's give a status. We'll do name, phone, email. What else might we want? Uh, we got address, city, state, zip. Okay. Address, unit, city, state, zip. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply some statuses. So when these emails first come in, well, what, what do I want to do to flag that as being new? So we could say new is our status. We could say pending, right? Um, there's a few different options, but it should be consistent. So what we'll do is we'll go to data, data validation. The cell range, we're going to select A2 through A, let's say, 1,000. And that way, the every single row down to the bottom is going to have the status options. So what we're doing is we're creating a dropdown right now with a list of items and we'll say pending what else after they come in are new you could say contacted if you reached out to them you could say approved you could say uh, disapproved and we will sure show validation help why not save all right now you can see all these little upside down triangles are here so you can select specific statuses the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create some conditional formatting to make this a little bit more apparent. So let's go to Format, Conditional Formatting, Apply to Range. Now notice I'm going to go A2, which is where our first row of actual data starts, and then we're going to go through I1000. And what that allows us to do is highlight the entire row instead of just a single column. So what we're going to do is here, we're going to go to Custom Formula Is. The value will be equals, uh, we'll say A2 equals pending. Actually, let's not do pending. Let's do approved for now. And we're going to toss a dollar sign in front of this. That way it'll apply to the entire row. And what, what we want to have happen is have it turn green if that is the status. So let's just try that really quick. So any row that I select and do pending, it should turn green. I'm sorry, approved, it should turn green. All right, there you go. All right, so now let's do that again. We'll say apply to range A2 through A through I1000. And we're going to say custom formula is equals dollar A2 equals if it equals what? Uh, disapproved. Then we will make it red. Done. Okay. So now let's pick one just to test it out. Okay. So there you go. You can see we've got an approved and a disapproved. Pending. 
we haven't done anything with, so there's no color. All right, so that's the primary step here in the actual sheet. So the next thing we're going to do is go to Tools, Script Editor. And what's going to happen is it's going to cr create a project. We'll give it a name here. Let's call it uh, Lead Tutorial 1. And you can see we've got a default function here. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use logger.log. This is a debugging method. And we're going to put it right into here. And we're going to say logger.log I am testing. And now this is how you can actually execute a function inside of the app script. So you can see the function name is my function. So you select that function in the drop down and you click play. And then it'll save and then it'll run. And then you do view logs. And you can see it says, oh, wait, it takes a second. Oh, see, now it's wasting my time. Let's pause this for a second. We'll come back once it does. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so it says, I am testing. I didn't do anything in between that break. I just was waiting for it to load, so we're not wasting time. So we'll do view logs, and you can see it says, I am testing. That's all logger.log does. And so if you understand that, that is pretty much how you can break through any barriers that you have. What we're going to do is we're going to create a few uh, different functions. The first we'll call parse email. So this is actually going to be the function that will read our email. So we'll do parse email. The next one we're going to create is going to be called format phone. And then we'll, we'll create one called sort. sort. Okay, so a few things we want to talk about before we go too much farther. The first thing is the different classes we're going to use for, for Gmail and for Sheets. Because we're reading our Gmail, we need to give special permissions there. And because we are reading our Sheets, we need to understand how to use the different classes there as well. So there's one here called Spreadsheet App. So I'm going to highlight that and just paste that really quick. And then there's another one here called Gmail App. And this is pretty much the outermost layer of your, your classes. So you've got spreadsheet app, you've got spreadsheets, you've got sheets, you've got ranges. So it starts in the outermost and then it works its way in. So let's start with looking at the spreadsheet app. So we'll create a variable. We'll call it ss equals spreadsheet app dot what? Okay, now remember I said it starts with the app and then we go into spreadsheets. So we're going to say get active spreadsheet. Now it's auto completing it for me, which is good. But what if you didn't know what your options were? Well, you can go to spreadsheet app on the developers page and you can see lots of different options and you can see what it returns. So you can see the one that we just used was called get active spreadsheet. Here, get active spreadsheet. And it says returns the currently active spreadsheet or null if there is none. And look, you can even say logger.log and get the URL of it as well. So let's go back up to the top. Get active spreadsheet here returns a spreadsheet. Now, once I have the spreadsheet, what can I do with that? Well, I want to see my options. I could say get sheet by name. I could get sheet ID, get sheet name. Uh, I can get a lot of things. So the one that I want is I want to get the sheet by name because our goal is to start to manipulate a specific sheet. So we will go back and say var sheet equals ss.get sheet by name. Now what do we want to call the sheet? It's already got a name and it happens to be sheet1. So that's the name of it. So we're going to say sheet1. All right, cool. So next, we're going to look at the Gmail app. Okay, so let's start with label. Uh, we'll do var label. Now remember, we created a label and we called it apartment inbox. So I will say equals Gmail app dot. Well, what are my options? Easy. I can go to Gmail app. 
Google Apps Script, same thing, class, Gmail app, and I can see my different options here. I want to get label information. So let's see. Get threads, not yet. Uh, get user labels, that could be good. Oh wait, here, get user label by name. I want a specific label. If I say get user labels, that'll give me an array of all of the user created labels. I just want a specific one that, re that will return a Gmail label. So after I do that, I can say, okay, get name, get, th oh, get threads. We're, we're getting closer. We want to get the label. We want to get the threads that are tagged in that label, the threads being the emails, and then it just goes on and on. So let's go back to our code, and we've got gmail app dot get user label by name, and the name we have is apartment tag inbox. And again, this will be called whatever your label is called and whatever information you're interested in reading. And then from there, I think we mentioned threads a minute a minute ago. So we'll say label dot get threads. So now my threads are literally going to be a variable holding all of the emails that I'm interested in within here. So anything that has that's in this thread here is going to end up in that particular variable. Cool. All right. So <clears throat> Moving on, um, we're going to look at how we're going to navigate through this. So we need to create a for loop, which is going to loop through all of the threads. Uh, but what's interesting is each individual thread could have uh, multiple emails within it. So it's like if somebody sends, actually, let's just go back and look right here. From leads, you see all of these here? Some of these have six emails within them. Some of them have two. So not only do we have to go row by row, but we also have to go uh, within each one we have to loop. So that's two loops that have to happen there. All right, so let's go back to our code. And we're going to create a couple for loops. Let's start with for, and then we're going to have another for loop inside of it. Now remember, one of these is going to go through the rows, and one of them is going to go through each individual, each individual uh, line here. So outer loop, inner loop is here. So let's go back to our code. And so how do we go through the outer loop and the inner loop? So what we're going to do is finish out this video. I'll go through how to do these for loops in the next video and how to actually pull the information. But this is a good place to stop right now. So if you have any questions or need any clarification, put it in the comments below and we will do our best to help you out. Thanks. Start with getting them. Messages. So if I say for bar i equals zero, while I is less than 